Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Today is May 16th, and I am here to tell you a little bit about my stitching so far today. I just am thrilled to tell you that the number in my private bingo game that was called today was number 13. You guys have been thinking good thoughts for me because this was the one number that I needed to do before I left town so that I can stitch the rest of my bingo game without any disruption. And it was, oh, sorry, it was spring at Hawk Run Hollow. And my spring at Hawk Run Hollow was number 13 and it was the one I can't take with me, it's just too large. And so I am working on this little square right here. And today, I was able to put in enough stitches for my bingo prompt, which was 122. And I'll show you what I did. <laughs> I put these little tiny sal uh, salmon colored flowers across the heel. And then I did this bunny. There's another little plant and a bunny over here to do, and then I can finish the tree. But um, that was enough to hit the prompt, and um, I stopped it, and I'm going to put it away now because in a few minutes, I get to do a Zoom call with two stitching friends, and we're going to be stitching. And I have packed away all of my smalls that are easy to stitch on. And um, I had to go ahead and do that because I had to get ready for the trip. So now I wanted something easy to stitch on while we're talking and zooming. So I pulled out my red work pairs. This is one of those um, series that I identified recently that was in my list of about 10 or 12 series that I had started or by stitching something in it and hadn't finished it. And so I had originally stitched this pair right here. So today, for ease, I'm going to do this one with the alphabet on it. That's the easier of the two, and that's the one I'm going to do next. And so while I'm zooming today, I will, I will stitch on that. Now, whether I finish it or not, I don't know. But if I don't, I may throw it in my pocketbook and take it with me. Who knows? So... It's in um, one color, and I've chosen to do mine in Lancaster Red. And I'm doing it on a beautiful piece of fabric that is called Bronze Age by Be Stitch Me. I did the first one on that fabric, and I'm going to do the second and third in the same color combination uh, because it's so striking and so beautiful. And of course, you know, I've now purchased three more <laughs> groups of three pairs uh, that I want to do. So um, today when I was sitting here, I was talking with my sister early this morning and I was thinking, what am I going to stitch on when I get on my Zoom call later today? And so when I got off the phone with my sister, I walked over to my box of um, kitted up projects that are waiting for whip go calls. And I think I have another pair on whip go to be called maybe later in the year. But since there are three, even if I do this one, I still have another one to do. So I'm going to get started on it so that I'll have my placement of it done by the time I get on my phone call with my friends. And I, I wanted to pull out my floss so you could see it. And I want you to see how pretty it looks on that fabric. So um, anyway, that's what I'm about to do. So got my, I'm so thrilled. I got the square called for my number 13. And so I do have my spring at Hawk Run Hollow finished for the bingo game. And now everything, every other square on there, I can hit with one of the whips that I have with me. So I'll be able to stitch my bingo calls right along every day. Um, while I'm traveling and I won't have to wait until I get back, um, you know, to stitch on number 13, which is great. So 
that was a red letter day last night when that number was called. I was I was up here going, woohoo! <laughs> it's pretty exciting. So I'll let you get back to what you were doing. And I am going to get my new start started. Happy stitching, everybody. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back. This is Dina. It is later on on the 15th, no, 16th of May. Um, I am happy to report <laughs> that I have had a fabulous day of stitching today. And it was a total unplanned thing. I did my bingo stitching this morning, which was my spring at Hawk Run Hollow. It was one I had been waiting on to be called so that I could get it done before I left because I couldn't take it with me. And I did 122 stitches on it this morning and I showed it to you. And then I mentioned in my last um, conversation with you that I had a call that I was about to get on, uh, a Zoom call um, with two stitching friends. So I grabbed my basket of things to be started and and those um, things that were in series that I've only done one of or something like that. And I saw this one and said, ooh, I wanna do one of those because I had done one and I couldn't wait to get back and do another one. And this is the Red Pair, Red Work Pairs by Annie B's Book Work. And I had done this one before and I had said I was gonna do this one today. So I got started on it right before my call and I think I had stitched three letters, A, B, and C, when I started my call. And we talked, we talked for a good couple of hours and caught up on uh, stitching retreats that one lady had been to and traveling that we were all gonna be doing soon and um, just catching up with each other and talking and visiting while we stitched. So when I got to the um, end of the phone call and we were ready to say goodbye because um, our husband, a couple of our husbands were ready for lunch, <laughs> uh, I said, oh, I may finish this today. I'm already down to the X in the alphabet. And I did finish it. So here it is. There's that one. Hold on. Sorry for that break, my husband was calling me. We are checking in online now and he needs me to come down there. But uh, anyway, so here's my SAF, my start and finish for today. I am stitching this on a beautiful Be Stitch Me fabric and it's called Bronze Age, 32 count Lugana. I am using two strands on this one because I wanted it to be really rich and I think it looks really rich. So that's a lovely, companion piece to the first one that I did and I did the first one on this fabric too so now I'm going to pack this away and leave it here because I have finished it and I've got a lot of other stitching to do while I'm gone so I don't need to take another new start with me but I am delighted to have had a start and a finish today hadn't planned that at all but it was just kind of rolling with what was on my calendar and uh, since everything else was packed up I pulled it out and I got going on it. So my husband has surprised me just a little bit ago and told me to pack my bags that we are going to Atlanta and spend the night because our flight is so early in the morning. Coco's already at Fred's. Um, we're gonna head out of here probably around six o'clock after the traffic and um, we will drive on down to Atlanta. We'll stop somewhere for dinner on the way and um, We'll be in the hotel tonight and that way we can get up at a regularly decent hour you know in the morning to get to the airport by 6 30 and and um that will be great so i'm gonna go down and help him get us checked in i've got to be there to, to help do my part so i'll do that now and i will hopefully have something to share with you in the next day or two may not have a lot to say tomorrow because we'll be traveling, we'll be flying. Um, I'll have to wait and see what I get a chance to do. But everything I can, I'll share with you to document the trip. In the meantime, everyone, happy stitching. 
Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. It is May 26th. It is a Sunday afternoon, and I am home from um, my trip. I just wanted to take a minute. I'm trying to put together the video from the cruise, and uh, I got toward the end of it and realized that there are several um, clips that I have to share with you that have no introduction really. <laughs> so um, I wanted to tell you a little bit about those clips and then I wanted to um, also share with you some lovely gifts that I received and what I'm gonna do is put this at the beginning of the video so that you know what's coming um, that doesn't have an introduction. <laughs> so um, in the first of the video, you'll see us traveling to Canada. You'll see us getting on the boat and going on excursions. And I'm sharing with you the stitching that I'm getting to do each night. Um, and it's lovely. And then as the cruise progresses, the only time I'm really filming is when I'm interviewing these wonderful people that I had the privilege of meeting on my trip. So after you see the interview with my friend Marissa, and I apologize, the coffee shop is loud, the wind is loud on the street when we're talking to other people, and when I'm talking to the lady I met on the cruise boat, it's very hard to hear us, I apologize, but there was nowhere quiet on the boat to really film um, that was public, and I didn't wanna ask her to go somewhere she didn't feel comfortable going, like my room or something, because she didn't know me that well. Uh, so you will hear conversation around us. You'll hear music playing, and the captain interrupts our interview. How rude. And does a big announcement. So there's a big gap in it where we had to stop and wait on him. But you get to see all the people I got to meet, which was awesome. So toward the end of the video, after you see um, my interview with Marissa at the coffee shop and some pictures my husband snapped of us as we were visiting, um, then you will see an interview with my new friend, Mar um, Margo, who I met on the cruise ship. And then right after that is an interview with three lovely ladies. And this is a fun story. These are ladies that I met. Uh, I had no idea I was going to get to meet until like a day or two before our cruise. Cindy, Cindy Gaudette, has commented on my video for years. And... She doesn't just write a small comment. We have conversations. And then we got on Instagram and friended each other. And now we can talk through Instagram quite a bit and Facebook Messenger. And she said, I can't believe you're coming to Canada. I wish I could meet up with you just for a minute and say hello. And I said, well, why don't we? And bless her heart, she and her friend Marion took a bus and came to meet us and in Halifax. And so they, they put quite a bit of effort into getting there. And then when I met them, they gave me some lovely gifts. And I'll share that with you in just a second. And uh, as they were walking from where they got off the bus to the ice cream shop where we were going to meet, um, they just looked across the street and saw Ann. Ann is the leader of their stitching group and apparently is the woman who organized their meetup. And... Um, they yelled at Ann across the street and said, hey, guess where we're going? And we're gonna go meet a floss tuber. <laughs> and Ann wanted to come along. And so I got to meet Ann as well. I knew I was gonna get to meet Cindy and Marion. Ann was a bonus and it was a delightful time and we chatted and we talked for a little bit and then we thought we were finished with the interview and we stopped the interview and then one of, the, uh, I think it was Cindy, mentioned that Marion personalizes a lot of her pieces and there was one in particular she personalized which was Kringles, the uh, toy store uh, from Little House Needleworks and um, she asked Marion to describe what some of the things she had done to personalize the piece and so Tommy started filming again. Uh, and so you'll see, you'll know it's a little bit later. I've got sunglasses back on. I didn't even know he was filming us. And then I looked around and said, oh, God, you know, <laughs> but it, it was fun. We had a great time. So I'll show you some gifts real quick, and then I'll get you back to the regular scheduled <laughs> video. But when I met with Marissa, um, Marissa 
surprised me with bringing us a new start. And she had the had kitted up the project in this beautiful finished, fully finished bag, little tote bag. Marissa's mother stitched this. Charlotte, it's beautiful. Um, it's absolutely gorgeous. Her mom had stitched this, fully finished it, and had it in her home, uh, holding dried flowers in it on the wall. And, and you'll notice it says things like seeds. It's all about gardening and flowers and stuff. Well, it's absolutely gorgeous. So Marissa had put inside it a chubby bee. I think that fits perfectly in this bag. And of course, you know, I'm working on it. I, we got a little bit of a start and I worked on it one time after that. So I have finished the little bee and now I'm starting on the flowers. But there was one thread color that the cross stitch shop didn't have that Marissa needed for this and I need it now to, to work on it any further. So I'll be pulling that out. It's wood trail. And I'll be, I'll be pulling that out of my stash because I know I have it and I will be able to work on this more. But in addition to that, Marissa wanted to make sure I had everything I needed. So she brought me this portfolio. And inside the portfolio, you see it holds all your floss bobbins in here in these little pouches, these little pockets. I have a needle minder that's sunflower and um, bee themed and even the needle threader I have never seen a needle threader with an attachment on it like this it is so cute it's got a little bee on it I love this needle threader that's the kind I use but I've never seen one with a, an, an item attached to it but that was precious in addition to that she gifted me the it's so Kelly Co um, floss organizer and this has the uh, soft fabric there that will hold your threads your the strands that you have left or your you know threads you've already got ready to go and so she brought all of that she had scissors she had a q-snap for me to use we had a wonderful time with our new start and so Marissa thank you so much that was so thoughtful and so wonderful in addition to that, when I met with Anne and um, Cindy and Marion, um, Anne gifted me the Nova Scotia Cross Stitchers join, join us on Facebook. This is how I can get in touch with them and I'm an honorary member now at her invitation. The ladies invited me to join, that was so sweet. I got a Nova Scotia Cross Stitchers um, starting guide Hold on, let me see. Put something behind it so you can see it. There you go. It's got a map of Nova Scotia on it. And I love a starter. I love a starting guide. So that was very helpful. That was from Marion. And then Cindy gifted me a stitched piece. And y'all know what it's like to get stitching from a stitcher. It's very special. And this says friends. And of course, in the word friends are the motifs. There's the little um, bobbin of floss. It's running through the R. And there's a needle that's piercing the heart there. There are two skeins of floss, one here and here. And then there's the uh, cherry tomato with the pin cushion. And she's even got beads on the pin. And there's another bobbin of floss down here. There's a beautiful button decorating this and in the back where she obviously um, stuffed it in the back the way that she creatively finished that off was to put her stitching label on there for me. Isn't that precious? I absolutely adore it. And you know it takes a lot of time to not just stitch it but to fully finish it. So Cindy, thank you. Thank you so much. You're such a sweet, sweet friend. It was such a treat to get to meet people that you normally only get to talk to through comments or through Instagram or Messenger on Facebook. Um, I am so sorry that Marissa didn't get to meet with us. To give you the end of that story, um, you'll hear in the video coming up 
that Marissa had car trouble after our day together um, and she didn't get to make it to Halifax but it was wonderful the time that we did have together so that was a treat for me and um, I'm very grateful for that so the other pictures that you'll see at the end are in um, there's a picture of Tommy in Halifax. He got some ice cream on our way back to the ship. We got an ice cream, a little cup of ice cream. And I snapped a picture of him paying for his ice cream. And there's a little girl standing next to him. I don't know who she is, but she's so sweet because she's reaching up, wanting her ice cream. And um, they didn't have hers quite ready yet, uh, but it was precious. And Tommy just thought it was so sweet. I've got a picture of him in, um, oh, let's see. Sydney in front of the big fiddle that was right off the pier and um, he stood in front of it and got someone to take a picture of that was the day it was raining and I didn't venture off the boat but he did he took a little walk and he saw that on his walks and then you'll see at the end a few pictures of Coco while she's at Fred's I have a ton more of her we got pictures every day but I think what I'm gonna do is because there's so many of them I'm gonna split them up and I'll be putting them in the next couple of videos so that you can see her playing with her friends. But this group of pictures is her when they first get there and she's in the house with Fred and they're saying hey to each other and, and she's making herself at home. She's all over their furniture. They don't mind that, but if you notice, Coco likes to sit up high. She likes a vantage point. And you'll see Fred is laying on the couch all nice and, and calm and, and chilled out. And Coco is on the tip top back of the couch. <laughs> and that's where she likes to stay. But anyway, you'll get to see a little bit of their time together. And in future videos, hopefully, you'll get to see more. But I just wanted to uh, give you a little bit of a preview of what's coming in this video about our cruise and about my stitching while cruising. And now I'm going to wrap this up. I will hopefully finish up the video today and I'll get it uh, processing and uploading so that um, maybe even tonight or tomorrow I can post it for you to see. And I hope you enjoy our travels. We had a fabulous time. Can't wait to go back. So in the meantime, happy stitching everybody. On for the video. Good evening everyone, this is Dina, welcome. Today is the uh, 17th of May and uh, my husband and I flew to Montreal, Canada today. Tomorrow we get on a cruise ship and we are gonna sail up the St. Lawrence River and we're gonna get to stop in several locations in Canada and we're so excited about it. So we Ubered to the hotel and tomorrow we are getting a late checkout to go to the ship because we are going to tour the basilica um, and we want to have plenty of time and it doesn't open till nine so we are going to go there and tour and then uh, try to be back here by one o'clock so we can check out and head over to our ship we can't board the ship until 11 o'clock and we're gonna let the crowd get on there first and then we'll head over there about one. Uh, we just have to be on the boat at least 90 minutes before they set sail and they don't set sail till tomorrow evening. So we'll be fine. But while we're here in Montreal, we really wanna to tour the Basilica. My husband's very excited to see it. And so that's what we're gonna do. Well. So today, it took some finagling <laughs> to get my stitching done for my bingo call. And that's all I've done so far today. But the call was for a focus piece. It, the number that was called on my board turned out to be for a focus piece. And I have been focusing on this one for a bit and I'm hoping to finish it if I can by the end of the year. So I gotta put some stitches in it because the year's almost half over and I still have at least two full pages to stitch. So I pulled out my By the Bay and I did more of the 
grass here at the bottom, but only just over 100 stitches, not about 119 or so. I don't know, I'll have to look. I did count them. So for now, I'm just focusing on filling in this bottom part portion. Um, that was easy stitches to, you know, to count just to do straight across. So that's what I did. I don't know what the call will be for tomorrow. I'm hoping that I'll have time tomorrow evening after we get on the boat and have dinner and settle in that I could do those stitches tomorrow night. We shall see. But tomorrow morning, I'll be touring with my husband and then we'll be headed to the boat and then we will, you know, tour the boat, look around, find our way around, and see uh, what we're going to be doing in Quebec, because I'm, I'm almost certain we bought an excursion in Quebec, and we'll have our tickets and times and things when we get on the boat. So I'm very excited about it. Uh, we have found people to be very friendly and very easy to communicate with. Here, uh, they speak French. Most everybody we hear is speaking French. But the minute that we speak English, they speak English to us. They are not uh, at all, um, don't appear to be resentful that we're, we're speaking English. And uh, in fact, we were asking directions today and there were three police officers standing together in a building, like a, a big shopping mall kind of thing. And Tommy walked up and said, English? And, and they all pointed to one <laughs> of them who spoke English. So we were fortunate and his English was impeccable. It was really easy to understand. So uh, we haven't had any trouble there, which is great. Um, I think the, the most um, different thing was at the airport that everything was in Fran French on the signage. And so uh, I just looked for the suitcase, you know, on the sign and said, I think that's where we need to go and baggage, you know, we were able to make out the word, uh, but we had to go through uh, customs first. So we, we had already done our customs forms and when we got there, they have these little kiosks and you walk up and you scan your passport and then you stand in front of a camera and it takes a picture of you and it matches to see if you match the picture in your passport. And, and then you get a print receipt of that where it says it's validated and you have to take that with you. And when you leave the building uh, at a point before you pick up your luggage, you have to turn that in to, a, to a, one of their security people. So it was smooth. It was, you know, very streamlined and painless. But my husband said, oh, I'm glad I kept that piece of paper. He said, I almost threw it away. He said, I thought it was just a receipt and I, did, I, I didn't care to have it. He said, so I was gonna throw it away, but he just stuck it in his pocket and thank goodness he did because we had to turn it in. <laughs> Little bit of a language barrier on our part. Just, uh, you know, we haven't traveled internationally before other than on a cruise where you get off the boat in a country. So here we go. I guess you can tell I'm excited about the trip because I keep babbling on, but I'll hush now and I'm, I am gonna go over here and I'm gonna do a little stitching. I don't know what I'm gonna stitch on yet, but I'm just gonna grab something and stitch and uh, wait for the call. I won't have it until about 8.30 tonight and uh, for tomorrow, but at least then I'll know what I'm stitching on tomorrow night. <laughs> I hope you're having a great, great weekend, and I hope that I get a chance to come back and share some other um, pictures with you. I hope we get to take some pictures at the Basilica and, um, you know, just share what we're doing and let you come along the trip with us. Thanks for doing that. Happy stitching, everybody. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. This is Dina. I'm sorry for the bright light. I'll try to block that a little bit. <laughs> I am on the Volendam, which is a cruise ship with um, Holland America. And 
I have been through, sailed from Montreal to Quebec City, and today my husband and I took a walking tour of Quebec City with a docent, and oh my goodness, it was amazing. We walked, I don't know how many blocks, or you know, each way, probably two or three, but, and then cut through the town. Uh, but we got to see every kind of architecture that they have here through the different three periods of time that they were occupied by different um, countries, <laughs> um, had different influences in their styles. Uh, it was amazing. It was amazing to learn all the history of Quebec. It was amazing to see the special relationship that the people have had with their indigenous people and also with Irish people and then with the American people uh, and the English people. It was, there was a lot that went on um, and it affected their town greatly. And there's a great deal of solidarity and pride in their French heritage. And um, in fact, we learned today that more people in Quebec a uh, uh, much higher percentage of people in P Quebec speak French than do in Paris, France. That's pretty exciting. Pretty interesting, don't you think? It was beautiful. It was a clean city. It was quiet. And we, uh, we walked, I think our tour started about 1030 and we got through at 130. Um, it was amazing absolutely amazing. I'm a little tired. <laughs> I haven't walked that long at one time in many years, but I tell you what, it was worth every second of it. When you have a docent that is both knowledgeable and a lot of fun, has a great sense of humor, wow, the time just flew by. It was amazing. So my husband and I had a blast. We loved it. And we, then we got back on the ship just a few minutes ago, ate lunch real quick, just a short little lunch because we have formal dining tonight at five o'clock. And so eating lunch at 1.30 when you have to eat a big meal at you know five, you don't eat quite so much. So we just ate a little bit. Um, and then my husband went to, to get a cup of coffee and sit and relax for a few minutes while I came to the room to stitch. So before he gets back, I'm gonna try to get this little uh, snippet recorded and uh, tell you about it. First of all, I will tell you, within one hour of boarding the ship, while we were getting on the elevator, a lady looked at me and said, do you do floss too? And the fact that she called it floss tube let me know that she's a stitcher and that she watches it, you know. And I said, yes, I do. And then she recognized, then she knew who I was. It was like she wasn't quite sure that she was really seeing me in Canada, <laughs> you know, since I live in Georgia. But we introduced ourselves with the promise of meeting up and stitching while we're on the trip. So I hope I get to see Margo again and get to stitch with her. I'm looking forward to that. Um, but it cracked my husband up that somebody recognized me <laughs> on the trip. It was very flattering. So yesterday, my bingo uh, assignment was number 22 to stitch on my most recent new start. And of those I haven't finished, my most recent new start is Spring Awakens, right here. And so I pulled it out and I stitched 109 stitches in the apron on the little female mouse, bunny, not mouse, sorry, bunny. I got up, you know, about to right here on it. And I put it away and I, I didn't have but a few little bit to stitch right before dinner yesterday. So then last night I got the call for the bingo for today and today's bingo is number, let me find it, number 12 and that is Whip of Choice. So since I had this one out, I went ahead this morning while I was waiting on my husband to get ready to go because we ate breakfast early um, and we had a couple hours before we had to leave. I just kept stitching on this. And so I actually got another 168 stitches on it 
and I finished her apron. And then I went ahead and finished her dress. So that's where I got to. So now the dress is actually done. This is all basket and flowers that are. I'm recording. Hello, everybody. From Quebec City. Yeah. Uh, so this is where the basket and flowers and everything will go, but her dress, her little skirt is finished. And that was great stitching this morning because I joined a magazine um, monthly challenge, a special challenge that they're doing, Mother May I? And you'll have five prompts, one for each day. And today's prompt was to stitch on a whip closest to a finish. And because this is my only or my most recent start this is small that I haven't already finished this one is my one closest to a finish so I was able to count those stitches for both my bingo game and my mother may I which was fabulous so now I don't have um, any prompts pulled out uh, to stitch uh, for any other challenges and it'll be 8.30 tonight when I get the call for my bingo for tomorrow, and I'm not sure how late it is when they'll put out the next Mother May I. But those will be the things I have to stitch on for tomorrow. So today, for the rest of the day, what little bit of stitching I get, <laughs> I can just pull out anything I want and work on it. Um, I have been reading a book that was written by one of the ministers at our church. Um, it's it's quite a different book and I am reading it while we're on the trip so I may do some reading as well but it's called Awakening it's by Christopher Simonton um, it's it's a very different take and so I'll have to tell you about it when I finish reading it but I am working on that as well so I may, I may get some reading in today we'll see well I'm gonna let you go get back to what you were doing I'm gonna get some stitching in and I will talk to you later Happy stitching, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back. I am today on a sea day. We are traveling up the St. Lawrence River and we are sailing um, from Quebec City to Prince Edward Island. I am having a wonderful time and uh, today I was able to stitch for two separate prompts this morning um, with the same project which was great the uh, call on my bingo game for today was a whip of choice which was fabulous and my call for uh, the monthly magazine challenge was to stitch on a whip that had a person in it. So for both, I decided to stitch on Curie Ibatacure's All You Need Is Love because it has people in it. And it was my whip of choice. So that met both of my requirements. So I originally stitched um, 103 stitches in this and posted it in my uh, bingo game because it requires 100 stitches and then I continued stitching on it um, for 493 stitches more so that's a total of 596 all total um, and I started filling in the sign so for my uh, bingo game I did the words hearts and club and that was 103 stitches and then I filled in these 493 white stitches and I still haven't finished it <laughs> but today's Monday today is Monday and that means I have a May Monday start today I brought it with me it's a small Christmas uh, ornament piece and I'm gonna pull it out of my cabinet over here and I'm gonna start it this morning so I will do that and then I will hopefully come back and share it with you when I finish it or finish stitching on it for the day we have a lot of activities available on the boat uh, my husband has an entire list of things he wants to do today so 
I'll have to see how much of that I'm going to do with him and how much I'll be stitching. But my plan today might be to find a really nice spot that I would enjoy um, going and sitting and stitching a little bit in hopes that I meet other stitchers. I'll try to give Margo a call uh, to her stateroom when it um, when I feel like I'm you know not interrupting her and just leave her a message to see where she might want to meet up and stitch. So it looks like it's going to be a great stitching day for me. <laughs> we shall see. Anyway, I can't wait to get to Prince Edward Island. That's where I'm going to meet up with my friend Marissa. And so I'm sure I'll have a lot to share with you there. We had a fabulous uh, time dining last night. We've been so fortunate. We have some of the nicest table mates. We joined a table of for six um, because they didn't have any more tables for two. And we had said we'd do either uh, in the beginning and they put us on standby. And so when we got here the very first day when we boarded, one of the first things we did was go and talk to them in the dining room and make sure they understood we would join another table. And that made the difference. So we got the last two seats at a table for six. And as it turns out, there are only five of us because one of the ladies at the table is traveling alone. She's a widow and she's traveling by herself. So we have met a lovely couple from Florida. Um, their names are Lisa and Nick. And then our uh, other friend at our table who is by herself this trip for the first time is Jean. So the people you meet on a cruise, they're so much fun. We've made friends on cruises before. So friends that we still, you know, do things with and travel with 10 years later. So that's kind of nice. Um, but this one, this is a great cruise. And my husband and I have already decided that at some point we would like to fly back to Quebec and spend two or three days there. Our docent from our tour yesterday warned us though not to stay four days because we might move there. <laughs> That's what she and her husband did. They came for a four day vacation uh, 45 years ago. Went home and sold their home, quit their jobs, and came to Quebec to live until they've been there 45 years. Um, so I am going to get busy with my new start for my May Monday start. I hope you had a great weekend and I hope your week's getting off to a lovely start for you. I'll talk to you soon. Happy stitching, everybody. Good evening, everybody. How are you? Welcome back. Well, it's been a great day here um, aboard the ship. Uh, my husband and I did a lot of neat things together. Uh, today, we went to the gym and worked out this morning. Um, we had lunch together. We went, my husband went to a lecture series while I stitched, but the fun part about my stitching was this. Remember me telling you that there was a lady that I uh, met right on the elevator when I first got here and that she recognized me <laughs> from my channel? Well, today, um, we met up to stitch and we went to Crow's Nest and we stitched for about, oh goodness, almost two hours. We had a wonderful time. At one point we just put our stitching away and talked. We had such a good time just getting to know each other. Anyway, my husband asked her as we were leaving um, if she would be willing to talk with me on my video and she said she would. So I can't wait for you to get to meet her. And um, I'm hoping that we get a chance to get together uh, in the next couple of days and film a little interview with her, let you get to know her as a stitcher um, and just, you know, see what she's working on. She's also a quilter, found out today. So, um, Today was my May Monday new start. So once I finished my stitching for my two prompts, which were my bingo game and my um, magazine monthly challenge game, then I started my new start. And my new start today was 
good tidings from Colorado Cross Stitcher. And so I got started this morning. I put 476 stitches in this thing for my new stars. I just kept stitching. <laughs> I started it this morning and then I stitched on it while I was waiting to meet up with um, my uh, fellow stitcher and uh, Margo. And now um, I think I'm gonna put it away for tomorrow. My um, call hasn't been called yet, but I'm looking at what could be called at least over here in the bingo game. And I have a whip of choice a whip closest to a finish, which this one now is closest to a finish. Um, and a whip needing attention and a spring whip and a whip for an acrostic. Those are what I have left. So I have with me my spring awakens, which I did use for an acrostic. And since I have finished the acrostics, I could go back and pick that up again and stitch on it again. Um, it would also cover a spring whip. So that one I can pull out if either of those are called tomorrow. A whip closest to a finish, I would use this one again. And then a whip needing attention, I probably could use any of them, but um, I'll wait and see if that's the one called and then I'll make up my mind based on what gets called in the magazine monthly challenge group for tomorrow because if I can, I like to stitch one thing to hit both of those. So I'll let you know. But anyway, that's my stitching for the day. Um, I'm excited uh, that um, I get to see my friend Marissa tomorrow. She's gonna meet us at the boat as soon as we get cleared from customs and are allowed to leave the boat. And she's been sending me um, little messages uh, as we've been sailing, letting me know her ideas on things we can do. And one of the things that she recommended was a hike in a national park, a, a short hike, but a hike nevertheless, that shows us the coastline and some of the beautiful flowers and um, scenery from Prince Edward Island. And you know how much my husband likes to hike. So I told my friend Marissa, he would be in heaven if we could do that. He would be so thrilled to get to hike. So I'll let you know what we plan on doing uh, once we get it all ironed out tomorrow morning. Um, my thoughts are we'll be gone most of the day. Marissa has to have us back by four o'clock because we set sail at six, but we eat at five. And so we have to get back at four so we can run in here and shower real quick and get ready for dinner. And um, tomorrow is a special day. It's a holiday here. And so uh, in honor of the holiday, they've asked everybody to wear orange. Now we knew that ahead of time. So I did bring a dark orange sweater with a beautiful scarf. I also brought a dress that has orange in it, but um, it's been kind of cold. So my thoughts are that I'll probably wear the, the um, sweater with the scarf. <laughs> we shall see. Anyway, I'm going to let you get back to what you were doing. I just had a few minutes while my husband has gone to play a trivia game. Uh, and then he'll be in here and he'll want to turn on the TV and kind of relax and put his feet up. And, and uh, so I want to be able to just sit and stitch while he does that or watch the show with him. Uh, we saw a beautiful dancing uh, troupe tonight. They did um, a series of dance that were um, to the theme of humanity, and, and it was a great show, and I wish I were able to move like that. They were lovely, beautiful shapes and, and acrobatics and things that they did, a lot of ballet. It was just, it was lovely. It was quite different. I really enjoyed it, so that was fun. Went to the gym with my husband this morning. I think I mentioned that, and I will tell you, I think the person was trying to be very helpful, but this gentleman came and got on the bicycle next to me after my husband vacated. He warmed up on the bike, and then he went to stretch his legs, his calf muscle, and then do some weights. 
So I wound up, you know, having an empty bike next to me, and this gentleman came and got on the bike, said good morning, and I said good morning, and then the next thing you know, he looks over at me and tells me that I need to increase the resistance on my bicycle. And I said to him, I'm really not working on resistance right now. I'm just putting in time. I'm trying to keep my body moving at a pretty fast pace to keep my heart rate up for the time that I wanted on the bicycle, which was 30 minutes. I wanted to do 30 minutes. He reached over and adjusted my bicycle on the panel on the top of the bicycle. I've never been more surprised in my life. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I cut my exercise time short and got off the bike and went and told my husband I was finished and um, was headed to the room and said, you know, what's wrong? And I told him and he laughed. He said, I think that man was flirting with you. <laughs> That's hysterical. Anyway, <laughs> um, you meet all kinds. Uh, I think he was trying to be helpful. I think he was trying to be encouraging to let me know he thought I could do more than what I was doing, but he didn't understand what I was doing. And um, I really didn't want him messing in my business, you know, as far as my exercising. I told the uh, our table mates about it tonight, and one of them is a widow. And uh, she said, did you just look over and tell him that he was being nosy and that was none of his business? I said, no, I just left. <laughs> so you meet all kinds of people <laughs> on the cruise. Most of them are quite pleasant and quite nice. And he was pleasant. He was just a bit controlling. <laughs> so anyway, that's been my only unusual experience on here on the cruise. So that's one for the books. We'll laugh about that for years to come, I'm sure. Well, have a great evening. I hope you're stitching. I certainly hope to be stitching this evening, and I will talk with you soon. Happy stitching, everybody. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. This is Dina, and I am on the Volendam from Holland America and today we are in Sydney and, and uh, Nova Scotia in Canada and it was raining this morning so I didn't leave the ship yet and uh, instead I stitched so I went up into the crow's nest which is a beautiful lounge uh, with windows all around the front of the ship I was able to sit and stitch for a little while and uh, I messaged Margot through Instagram and she and her husband came up to the crow's nest and she brought her stitching and we stitched until my husband came to meet me. He had gone to a class, uh, a calligraphy class, and um, he came up there to see if I was ready for lunch and so I said let me finish this one little thing I'm working on and I will be finished with my project so uh, we had to rush off for lunch but the plan is for us to get back together this evening because Margot has agreed to let me talk with her for you guys to get to meet her I'm so excited <laughs> so um, that'll be hopefully in the next segment that you see but this morning I was working on my May Monday start from Monday of this week and it was good tidings. This is from the Colorado Cross Stitcher and uh, you can find her patterns on coloradocrossstitcher.com. And so um, she is also on YouTube and Instagram as the Colorado Cross Stitcher. But uh, this one is called Good Tidings and I I have four of hers in a series and so I'm trying to stitch them in a way that I can make four ornaments on this piece of fabric so this is my finish now the lighting is not good we're in the stateroom it's not great but I'll try to tilt it where you can see it as best as possible each of the little medallions is different but this entire pattern only has four colors in it four or five three maybe five but 
each of those medallions is a little bit different. So you have to watch what you're doing very carefully. But other than that, it's not a hard pattern to stitch at all. You just have to pay attention when you do that. But I did stitch about 350 stitches in this today. I started with it early this morning because the magazine um, monthly challenge for this five days has been Mother May I. And we asked Carolyn what we can stitch on. And today's instruction was to stitch on something with words on it. So I chose this one because of good tidings. And I actually was working on this, these leaves, and I left the leaves and came down here and stitched some of the words in so it would show up, you know, in my picture that it did have words in it so she would know that it met the criteria. And as it turned out, my bingo call for today was whip closest to a finish. <laughs> and that was this one. And so I was really excited about, um, being able to work on it for both uh, my bingo game with my friends in Alabama and my magazine monthly challenge. So one piece hit both of them. Wonderful. I love it when that happens. And that means that now I have a finish. I'm excited. <laughs> So I have a couple of more uh, things I want to work on and I'm going to uh, put this away for now and get busy stitching a little bit. My husband decided to take a walk. He's going ashore if he wants to see the big fiddle and a couple of things right near the shore. But um, it's just, just finished raining. I'm afraid it may rain again. And um, I have been missing my stitching because I've been running and going and tomorrow I get the privilege of going again. So my friend Marissa, who met us uh, yesterday, and I've got uh, footage of us together, pictures, and then a little tiny clip that Tommy recorded for us. Now we're in a coffee shop. I apologize, there's a lot of background noise, but that's just where we could be. Um, but Marissa and I wanted to show you our new start together. She was kind enough to bring us a start to work on together. And so we videotaped that and then we got on the boat and Marissa walked back to her car to get head back to her mother's house for the night and then she was gonna drive to meet us in Halifax tomorrow her car wouldn't start so Marissa's been stranded uh, we did not know it until we had already set sail she didn't let us know she was in trouble uh, I think probably on purpose but she didn't tell us that she was in trouble with her car. But she called her auto uh, insurance, you know, got her a tow truck. They towed her car to the dealership. She spent the night at a hotel last night. And this morning they're trying to work her in and get her car repaired. It's her mother's car. She thinks it's an alternator or something. So hopefully they can replace that and it'll be a quick fix and she can make it on down to Halifax. But if not, um, I have been in communication with the two ladies, one of the two ladies that's going to meet us in Halifax. And uh, so we're still going to meet up, even if Marissa can't be there with us, uh, because we've chosen a spot that's within walking distance for my husband and I. And so that'll be fine. But um, we sure hope Marissa can come. We really want her to get to meet the two ladies here in Canada as well. So anyway, there you have it. Um, I'm going to get busy stitching. Uh, I'm hoping Marissa's car repair is well underway. She's supposed to keep me posted as it develops. And I haven't heard anything from her since this morning. Um, so I need to check in with her again. But for now, it's stitching time for me. Happy stitching, everybody. Hi, everybody. Hello. Hi. This is my friend Marissa, and we are here at Prince Edward Island in Charlottetown, and Marissa surprised me today with a new start. So we have Chubby B that we are starting together, and this is ours, this one, and we started it here at the coffee shop, and we've been having a great time chatting and stitching together and visiting. We visited the park today, Cavendish, Cavendish. we took a little hike, and then we had lunch together. That's right. So we just wanted to show you our new start, thanks to Melissa. And we'll go back to finish stitching now and visiting. And hope you're having a great day.
Happy stitching. Bye. <laughs>
kind of the stitchers you need to you need to join in and tell them where y'all meet we meet at st andrews presbyterian church hall in dartmouth and if you go across the mcdonald bridge you just keep going up the hill as far as you can go and there we are all right very good well i i just want to say thank you all for making me feel so welcome today and i had such a good time talking with you and having lunch with you it's been a treat thank you so much we're glad you came yes i'm so happy to meet you finally oh, i know all right thank you A lot, well, first I put our little dog in the cart, and then in one of the windows I had um, my son, he, he was killed almost nine years ago, but he had a little tykes car, so I took out the doll carriage and, and my grass little tykes red and yellow car, and I put it in there, and it was just a bunch of other little things. Oh, there's stuff to have a little stuff. Oh, yes, I did. Each of the kids had a special bear when they were young, and I grabbed each of the bears and put it in one of the Oh, how awesome. It's, how it's one of my favorite pieces. Yeah. yeah. As soon as you said that, I thought, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, thank you all so much for letting me Oh, I'm so glad. Film you. So